get a little too close. We call this ambush predation. They are ambush predators, just like the snapping turtles that we see in here as well, which means that these animals are really good at lying in wait motionless for extended periods of time. This is their hunting strategy. They wait for another animal to think that this gator is some type of big log, and they get too close, and of course the gator does what it does best and snaps up a nice meal. And which is why, when we look at Claude here, he doesn't move very often, and that's exactly what he needs to be doing in order to find that prey. However, if you are a gator and your main tactic for getting prey is blending in with your surroundings, do you think that might pose a problem for a gator like this one before us? Oh, definitely, my friends. Claude here is an example of an animal that has albinism. Has anyone here ever heard of albinism before? Or an animal that is considered albino? Yeah, right? That is something that can affect any animal, including humans. And what it actually is, albinism is a genetic mutation that affects the body's production of melanin. Now, melanin is what gives us pigment in skin, eyes, and hair. So the melanin that my body produces gives me my gorgeous hazel eyes and these beautiful, luscious brown locks of hair. Now, Claude here, due to that albinism, actually has no melanin in his body, which means he has no pigment. So even though we look at his skin, it looks white, but really it's colorless. But there are many, many layers of that thick, scaly hide sort of stacked on top of each other, which makes it look white to our eyes. Now, those of us on that side of the room might be able to tell what color are his eyes, or what color are animals with albinism's eyes tend to be. Can y'all see? Yeah, like pinkish or reddish, right? And you see that here as well? Yeah. Now, remember, there is no pigment in his entire body. Even his retinas have no pigment, and that pigment in our retinas is helpful for directing sunlight to the back of our eyes where our optical nerve can take information, send that straight to our brain. So for this guy, he has no color in his eyes. And in fact, the reason they look reddish or pinkish is because we are looking straight through his clear eyeballs at the blood vessels behind them, which is what gives animals with albinism that reddish or pinkish hue for their eyes. Now, since he also does not have any color in the retinas, that means that light sort of bounces around chaotically within his eyes. So if you do ever see him swimming around in this area, he tends to bump into things pretty frequently because he can't see all that well. If he were a human, he would definitely be wearing glasses. Now, another side effect of having this albinism is if you look around most of this museum, there's quite a bit of natural light, some light coming straight from the ceiling, except for this part of the museum. And that's because Claude here can actually get sunburned very easily. No pigmentation in that skin makes it really easy for the radiation from the sun to affect his skin in a uh, sort of malicious way, you could say. Now, since Claude is not able to camouflage, like most other alligators, which tend to have a dark green or even black coloration, that can pose a real issue for the survival of a gator out there in the wild. So they're very, very rare to spot because it's very hard for them to survive to adulthood or even very long at all because there are other animals out there that can see them and potentially want to eat them if they're a young gator, a smaller one. And then even once they get to this size, it's really hard for them to catch their food in the first place. So today, we think there are about 5 million gators out there in their natural range here in the U.S. And out of all of those gators, we think maybe 50 of them have albinism like Claude. So it's very, very rare and very unique. And so exciting for us to have Claude here at the Academy as well. Now I also want to mention a couple of things about these snapping turtles, because these snapping turtles, the alligator snapping turtle, is the largest freshwater turtle in the world. The largest one of these five is 120 pounds. That's a big turtle, my friends. And these animals are also ambush predators. So they spend a lot of their time hanging out on the bottom of the water and very motionless, except for one part of them, their tongue. They will lie down at the bottom with their mouth open and their tongue is really small and thin and wiggly and pink. It looks very much like a worm. And this is by design because the turtle will sit there wriggling this little tongue around until a fish, thinking it's a worm or something, gets a little too close. And then of course the turtle does what it does best and snaps up that nice meal. So these are excellent uh, predators able to blend in with their surroundings and wait really long times to find their prey. Now, was there anyone who came over here and looked at Claude and thought he was a crocodile? That's all right. Yeah, 